Oh, I'm live. Great. <laughs> Hi, Barney. Hello. So sorry we jumped on here 10 minutes late. I had a few technical difficulties connecting that to this and then to stream it and all that stuff. So please forgive me. But I have something fun in store that I thought would be a great time to do it. Um, it's spring. We have nicer weather. We're, you know, changing our makeup styles, hopefully, or at least like changing or incorporating new things. And I want to talk about how to incorporate a pop of color and more of a natural everyday kind of makeup look. So as you guys are jumping on, and I see all my friends. I see Celine. I see everybody. Wow. Okay. Amy's on. Nancy's on. Angie's on. Be bio girl. Hi. Hi everyone. Okay. Sorry. I'll keep, I'll keep myself in frame. I get excited and it's hard to see like your guys' picture from um, where I'm streaming. So I just want to make sure I say hi to everyone. It's so good to see you all. And I'm so happy that we get to like sit down and, and have this time together on a Sunday. Now who had the time to watch my bonus video this morning? And do you have any questions about it? Or like, um, if, if you're unable or if you missed my community post, I popped, I popped up yesterday. I just want to kind of clarify like why a bonus video went up today. I don't ever usually upload an actual video on Sunday. I only ever do my lives. Like my Sunday is like our time to just have fun and just be casual and just like hang out like we're all together. But I did pick up a sponsorship. If you probably, you probably caught it by now. I worked with Dalba and I was, I'm, I've been loving that brand, like obsessed with that brand. I even put the spray in my makeup kit and I want it back. But um, anyway, long story short, to give you like more um, context to what I'm talking about, I, t I picked up a sponsorship with Dalba and I'm super grateful for it. But the time, timing of the video that they wanted to come, to go up was, it basically, long story short, without all the backstory, it had to go up today to make it work. It had to go up today. So we made it work. It's a bonus video. And now you're seeing me live and it's just a lot of Nikki in one weekend <laughs> because I uploaded yesterday. Yesterday was also full transparency, obviously a sponsorship. I usually work with Ulta Beauty once a year. And so, um, and it's usually like when they have their savings event. So that video was all in relation to like their savings event and recommending like what I think are the things to buy during that um, event. So if you caught that video too, if you caught both the videos or just one, I just want to say, I say thank you. And thank you for taking the time to watch the videos. And I know we're all busy and, you know, we all have our things going on, but I just really appreciate you guys always showing support and watching the videos and doing the thumbs up and all those things. Like, you know, my channel would not be anything without you guys. Okay. Let's stop being emotional and emo. Let's get into this fun live and let's have some fun with this new PR that I got from One Size Beauty. Thank you so much, One Size Beauty. I love that brand and I love Patrick Starr so much. I met him last month too, which was a treat, but they sent me their new Wicked collaboration. So they collabed with Wicked. How pretty is this palette? Oh my gosh, I'm missing. Super thanks to Suzanne sending you the biggest kiss and hug right now. You're so sweet. I love you and I love your support. Um, how pretty though, guys, how beautiful is this palette? So I got this PR just recently. I opened it up and it's really honestly what sparked me to get inspired to want to do a pop of color for this video. So that's why we're doing it was because of this palette. So what I'm thinking is probably going to dip into this beautiful pale baby blue. It's so pretty. And I just want to create a really soft wearable pop of color look. And I want to teach you ways that you can feel confident and incorporate something fun like a pop of color and, and not feel like you can't go out and uh, like it's not appropriate for the day. So I want to teach you like an easy way to incorporate color. So I want to get into skin first because um, it's not going to be a dramatic eye makeup look. So I can easily just do my whole base routine, like my makeup routine, and then show you the eye makeup look after my base is on because we're not doing a smoky eye. So Kelly, thank you for the super thanks. Just want to say thank you, Nikki, for being so amazing. Oh my God, Kelly, you're amazing and so supportive and sweet. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to use a little bit of a product that I'm still testing out. And I want to just make that clear because it's not that I recommend it. I'm still testing it out to see if I actually like it. It's the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. Have you, have any of you tried this? I'm curious if you guys have thoughts. 
I'm gonna work this into the center of my face. This does have a nice subtle fragrance to it. Very subtle, but there's definitely some fragrance. Oh, hi song. Okay, try not to get too distracted. I see all the friends, all the friends are up there. Melissa, Kim, Lindsay, Angela, Stephanie. Love you guys. Oh my gosh, I appreciate you all so much. Okay, so silk primer is on. It just peeled a little right there, so that's not a good sign. I am, of course, wearing it with a mineral-based, actually, a mineral-based sunscreen underneath. And I, in my experience, you guys, mineral-based sunscreens always pill on me. There's just something about them. Wanda. Wanda, thank you so much for the super thanks. My gosh. You guys. <laughs> Blown it up. You're so sweet. Okay, I have to use this foundation again. I used it literally once and I never touched it again, partly because I did that huge foundation haul and I just have so many foundations that I fell in love with that are sitting like right here that I've been using and just grabbing more than like newer ones that I've gotten in PR. But this one is nice from what I remember. We're gonna find out again what my thoughts were. It's the Makeup Forever HD Hydra Glow. So the shade, I believe that worked best for me because they sent me two shades. Um, the shade that I think worked best was the 1N14, which is this shade. So I'm gonna pump out some. And in case you were wondering, yes, today is brush washing day and all my all my N17s are always filthy. <laughs> They're always, they have so much makeup on them by the end of the week because I use it for so much stuff. And I have been just very, very busy and I'm not caught up on certain things that I need to be caught up on, like laundry and washing my brushes. Those are the two things that always just fall behind. Monica, thank you for the super thanks. So yeah, brush washing day has to happen. Um, definitely has to happen at some point today because I need my brushes to be clean for the week and I barely have. Unless I wanna use a beauty, beauty blender for everything, I gotta clean some brushes tonight. Who else has been washing brushes on Sunday? I know some of you tag me and it's so cute. I love it when you guys tag me in like anything. I love being tagged. It's like the funnest thing. Um, but when you guys wash your brushes and you tag me, it just makes me feel like I'm not alone in this <laughs> dreaded. <laughs> I hate to say I dread it, but I really do dread washing my brushes. It's just the reality. It's like my least favorite thing about being a makeup artist and also being a makeup lover who wears ton like makeup on a regular basis. I always have Dirty brushes. Speaking of brushes though, also received in the PR package with the One Size Beauty Wicked collection is this, look at this, it's a broom. How cool is this brush? So we're gonna have to find a way to use this today. Um, it's more of like a, a natural finish brush. So it's very soft, very fluffy. It's not gonna deposit too much product or color but we'll have to use it for supping today just so we can see how this applies. But for now, let's talk about this foundation one more time. As it's going on, I'm remembering that I did like it. I think it's really nice. It's giving a nice smooth glow to the skin. The color I have to say is spot on. Like that's a really good color match for me. And I'm a hard person to color match. I don't talk about that often, but in my opinion, I, I think I have, I am a tough cookie to color match because I have a more of a warm olive complexion. Like I literally have hints of green in my skin tone, hence the olive, right? But most cosmetic brands just don't have a lot of olive undertone shades to choose from. So it could be very hard to find something that really truly matches me. So I, I make do with what I can. Oh, I'm seeing that someone just made it or can't believe I made it to a live all because I'm stuck in traffic waiting to get, oh, waiting to get on a ferry. Well, good luck. I hope you can make it through your traffic and at least you have some entertainment. So I'm building up the coverage just a touch because this formula is a little bit more on the natural side. I'd say it's more of a light coverage that you can definitely build up. So I'm going to build it up and start with like a tapping stippling motion. Oh, Maggie, thank you so much. Have you thought, Maggie's asking a really good question. And I, Maggie, I was actually just talking about this to a fellow YouTuber, um, Glam Girl Gabby. Her and I talk a lot. She's the sweetest person on earth, by the way. I don't know if you guys follow Glam Girl Gabby on YouTube. Um, 
I'd be surprised if you if you don't. She's huge on YouTube and she's got tons of like amazing educational videos. And I get to meet her next month, side note. But her and I were talking about PO boxes and yes, Maggie, to answer your question, I do plan on getting a PO box very soon. Great, great question. Oh, song, I have to read your comment. I have so many vintage jewelry I'd love to send you. Oh my God. Song, that is so sweet. I would probably, I don't know if I'd be able to take it. Like I'd probably have to like, I don't know if I could, if I could actually accept it, I would be so touched. <laughs> I love vintage jewelry. I love jewelry in general. I'm a jewelry junkie, you guys. I know that's not the best phrase, but I don't know how else to describe it. I love jewelry. Real, fake. I mix it all up. It's kind of like my clothing. I mix high end. Like I'll buy like nice jeans or like nice pants, nice trousers, things like that. And then I'll buy an H&M tank top for $6. Oh, Nancy, thank you so much. Don't forget about the group. It's so much fun. Makeup and Nicky Rose fan group on Facebook. Oh, I love that, Nancy. I, I need to, I have followed it. I am now, we, what do you call it on Facebook? We're friends. We're fr Facebook friends now, Nancy. <laughs> And I just, I love it. It's so sweet. I actually had a couple of people text me screenshots of it this last week and the week before. And they were like, close friends too. And they were like, did you know you have this? I'm like, yes. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm just shocked that I have that, to be honest. It doesn't feel real that I have a fan base or like that I'd have a fan page. It still like feels like it's can't be real. Um, but they were, my friends were freaking out. They were like geeking out over it. They're like, that's so cool. Like, just, it was so sweet. So, so sweet. I love my friends. Um, including you guys. You guys are my friends. So let's get this party started. Let's get this look going. I know I just spent forever putting that foundation on, but <laughs> I like to really take my time to blend foundation on. Like that's one of the biggest things about me. If I'm doing your makeup, I'm going to spend a lot of time making sure your foundation looks flawless on your skin. So Dibs sent me all their stuff. I have been loving this shade now. I kind of switched from, I was using the shade 2.5 and now I'm using 5.5. So cream bronzer on one end, blush on the other end. I'll use a blush in a second, but let's get this cream bronzer going. So I'm gonna hit my usual places, right? Top of my forehead. And you'll notice too, I confidently apply this directly to my skin. I've been noticing as I'm playing with this formula that it doesn't really break apart my makeup. Unless my makeup was set with some form of powder or even a little bit of powder, then it would break it up. But applying this to a wet base, like the Makeup Forever, works really well. So I'm gonna look wild for a second. Hold on tight. And I'm actually gonna grab, I'm actually gonna blend this out with another equally dirty N17. Don't judge me. We just, we try to keep it real around here. And I'm going to tap, 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 as we all like to say now. And Jennifer sending, oh my God, such a generous super thanks. Are you kidding me? Jennifer Kenner, thank you so much. I love your haircut, by the way. <laughs> Beautiful, I love the bangs. Thank you so much. My gosh, you guys. So I wanna talk about more makeup sales because as you know probably by now the sephora savings event is is going to happen next month and my cart is quite a scary place in terms of like how much the total is already and i haven't even i haven't even finished putting everything that i need in there so as i talked about this many times before like during the sephora sales let me just buff this out real quick because i look really wild during the Sephora savings event, that's usually when I, or that's always when I take the time to buy more of my Armani foundation and more of my Dior backstage face and body foundation for my pro kit. That's when I stock up. I basically buy those two foundations twice a year. I mean, usually, right? There's always instances where I run out of a certain shade that I use the most throughout the year and I always end up picking up full price. So I haven't even added those two formulas that I need to replenish in my pro kit and my cart is well over a thousand dollars but I do have some amazing Tom Ford products in that cart for Sephora that I cannot wait to pick up and to do that full face of Tom Ford so 
I promise you all that video is happening very soon. And um, don't hate me for waiting for the sale to start because Tom Ford is not cheap. I mean, it's just crazy, crazy expensive products. But I do think a lot of their stuff is good. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be well worth it. And I'm also debating, I actually had a question for y'all. I'm debating which um, quad eyeshadow palette I should get from Tom Ford that you would want to see me use for that video the most. I would really love to hear your thoughts because I'm debating between, there's one called, oh God, what is it called? Heat something, heat wave? I'd have to look. Maybe I'll do a community post and I'll have you guys vote on the, that's what I'll do. Bingo. I'll do a post and I'll ask you guys in the community post to vote on which palette to get. Does that sound like a good idea? I need to remove, Lindsay says I need to remove everything and start over. Okay, layering a little bit more bronzer and then I'll probably go in with the powder bronzer at the end. But we have a really nice base going on. I need to brighten my under eyes. They're feeling really dark lately. I'm gonna go for my old school classic. That's a MAC Prep and Prime highlighter and Bright Forecast. Bright Forecast has a peachy tone to it that makes it ideal for color correcting um, dark circles. If you're my skin tone, a little bit deeper or a little bit lighter, this is a really great shade to use. And it's really easy because you could actually just wear it by itself and not feel the need to put like another concealer on top. I have one clean N14 brush in my collection. Can you believe that? Sandy Lee with the super thanks. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. This is to help. No, Sandy, you're so sweet. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you. You guys are so sweet. Thank you, I appreciate you so much. But Sandy, you guys are just so generous. It's it's kind of mind boggling. Okay, I'm gonna tap, tap this in, but look how much better this looks already. And this product has been around since I started doing makeup. Like it's been around for a long, a long time. Okay, so somebody, Linda's saying Tom Ford Color Quad Cream Runway Collection. I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay, let's tap this in. Let's get some concealer going under the eyes. And then we're gonna start the look and it's gonna be very, very easy to do, very user-friendly. So for concealer, no surprise here probably. I just can't get enough of this concealer. It works so well. This will crease if you do not set it, like most concealers will crease. But it's the Fenty We're Even um, Hydrating Concealer. It's long wearing. The shade that I like and that I wear for myself is 225N. Has a nice neutral undertone to it, which I'm all about neutral or pink undertones, like cool tone undertones for my under eyes. And I know I'm missing a lot of questions, bear with me. I figured it'd be great to just get a beautiful look going and like create a nice solid look. And then I'm gonna answer, I wanna stick around for like 10 to 15 minutes after the look is complete, just to solely dedicate to answering questions. So if that sounds good to you, let me know and maybe either save your questions, ask them again, and um, I'll try and do my best to answer as many as humanly possible. I'm trying to talk fast. <laughs> I've only had one cup of coffee today, so um, I'll do my best to answer them quick. Usually by the time I go live with you guys, I've had a full on cup of coffee and usually a very strong iced matcha from my like local coffee place that I am obsessed with. Gosh, Bella, I just read your question about lip liners from K, from Kim, Kim K. Um, I, I really want to try them personally, but I would love to hear your all, all your thoughts on if they're worth it. All right, concealer is on. It looks a lot brighter on camera than it actually is in reality. With whatever's left over, I'm gonna buff it down my smile lines. So Mitch, Laura is asking, where's Mitch? Mitch is gonna pop out here once we start answering questions. But we actually have family staying, his family staying with us right now. We have his cousin and then his younger cousin staying with us. So he's getting some much needed quality time in with his family. And, um, you know, I, I feel guilty like popping out here, but I also, I gotta, 
I gotta go live just an hour and we gotta spend this time together. So Mitch is getting some quality time in with his family and um, he will pop out though and help me out with questions. I just jumped ahead to one of my favorite products I featured um, today. Today, yes, today I'm getting mixed up with my videos. Um, I featured this today in the dry skin makeup tutorial. It's the Kosas, it's called the Sun Show. And it's in the shade Waves. It's like a really soft bronzer. I am, you guys, I'm obsessed with this product. It is so easy to use. I mentioned in that video today that I think this is a really nice, more affordable alternative to the Hourglass Ambient Lining Palettes and just really easy to work with and use. So if you're curious about products like that, like baked, illuminating products like that, then I would definitely check this out and maybe hold off and wait till this up. Save some money. Okay, just warming up and warming up. This actually lays beautifully on wet makeup. Hence why we, we just did it now. I'm going to now jump back to the dibs and use the other side of it, which is so convenient. So you got the bronzer on this side, you have the cream blush on this side. I just caught a question from Tammy, which Valentino perfume is your favorite? I forget the name. <laughs> I forget the name, but I, I can definitely, you know, what I should do, I should make a, like a like to know it post about my favorite perfumes. I've been meaning to do that for a while. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for the super things. If you could only have five lip liners, what would they be? Whoa, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to apply this with my N17. Tap on this beautiful soft pink blush. That is a great question. And I think, I think I would need to make that into a video. What do you think? Cause that's a really great subject. I have to really think about that though. I need to, that's a tough one. Cause I am a lip liner fanatic. I love lip liners as you know. So I want to talk about also why I chose this blush color. It's a nice soft neutral. I mean, it's pink, right? But it's like a pretty and soft pale pink neutral. Of course you could build up to be a lot stronger and intense than I am right now, but I'm just going to do maybe like two coats on each side or two runs of this on each side of my cheek to start. And the reason why I'm choosing a blush that's like soft in tone, but still very like spring, very fresh, right? Because I want it to not clash with the color that we're going to put on our eyes in just a bit. So choosing a blush that's nice and soft when you're doing, when you're incorporating a pop of color is absolutely crucial. It's like probably one of the number one tips I would suggest. Your Blush and your lip color is going to be a, a crucial part of making sure that your eyeshadow, like your pop of color that you're wearing on your eyes is wearable. So you don't want anything to clash um, or add just too much of a makeup -y element to already wearing a pop of color on your eyes. So with that said, there's one quick thing we need to do. And that is, I'm just going to take that bright forecast one more time and I'm going to do a little quick highlighting under my brow because I want somewhat of a clean, more defined and sculpted appearance to my brow for that pop of color. So just running this quick and easily. This is something I do in a pinch when I'm in a hurry all the time. Not that I'm in a hurry, but like this is always in my to-go makeup bag for a reason. It's like very easy to use. I do have, lo and behold, a clean N16. I have a lot more clean brushes than I, I thought. It's really just always those N17s and my N15s and my N12s that are usually filthy by the end of the week. So I'm going to take the longer bristles and just lightly buff this out and down just like that. Nice and pretty. And it just gives my eyes, you know, for one thing, it gives my eyes like a little subtle lift up. Kind of gives them more of an open effect. It's a really great trick to use if you have um, more hooded eyes, more, even more like um, mature eyes. If you have mature eyes, this is a really great technique to give a very soft lifted effect to your eyes. I'm going to keep this brush in my hand and I'm going to grab my Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette. Yes, I'm going to pick up the new Bloom one during the Sephora sale. You better believe it. And I cannot wait to get it. And I am going to, I thought about getting it now, but I also thought I'm going to save on it so soon. I might as well just wait a little bit, you know? 
um, and not be ridiculous and buy it right away. So N16, I'm gonna dip into this beautiful, can you tell this is like my favorite cream shade? <laughs> this beautiful cream base in the Groundwork palette. And I'm gonna layer this just all over my lid. The trick to what I think, like in my opinion, the trick to wearing or incorporating a color, like a bright color into an eye makeup look is layering it and combining it with really neutral tones to kind of balance it out. I just caught a super thanks from JL. Tell me if I'm pronouncing your name right. I really hope I am. I'm, I'm, I could be bad with that. Thank you so much for the super thanks. Oh, hey Nikki, I thought it'd be fun to have a picture, have pictures of the products you'll be using prior to your live. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. You know, I need to start allowing a little bit more time to get myself ready on Sunday mornings <laughs> to do that. But it's just hard sometimes, you know, between like the dogs and Mitch and just emails and stuff like that. Sometimes it's hard to get myself up and ready quick enough. So I'm gently, you can kind of see, I'm gently pulling out that little bit of cream product with the N16 and just kind of sculpting in a nice, soft, natural way. And, you know, on camera, it's it's going to look really nice and soft. In person, it's going to look like a nice, soft shading um, tone on your eyes, just to kind of sculpt your eyes, bring them out. I love this palette for just sculpting my face in general, but my eyes, obviously, it's just a really beautiful and well thought out palette, in my opinion. Like, look how pretty that is just by itself, right? We haven't gone in with anything else. So I am going to also take now a decently clean N13 brush, and I'm going to dip into the like-minded powder. So I just want to use this to kind of set the crease. So dipping in. Tap off the excess. I'm going to blend this softly into the crease for some more definition. And also too, I know I've had a lot of you ask when my brush is going to be back in stock. The Beaky Beauty is working on it and hopefully they'll be back in stock within the next month. Um, same with like the N17. I know the N17 is sold out. I believe is the N16 sold out? I, I want to say it is. No, it is. I know it is. The N16 is also sold out. So this brush right here is sold out, which is good and bad. And this is also sold out, but they should be back in stock very soon. I know they're working hard right now to get them back in stock. So layering that powder in the same shade, just like that. And Mitch is with us now. Oh my God. Diane, I missed that super thanks. Holy smokes. Wow, thank you so much. You're so kind, wow. You guys, this is why I get distracted. I'm like blown away by the, Did you see Suzanne? yeah, by the amount of generosity you guys show. It's unreal. Mitch is here now, even though he should Hi, be everybody. spending family time. Now, I'm gonna jump into this next shade I wanna use and I'm gonna grab an Angie Hot and Flashy. It's an A501. And I'm gonna now dip into the powder side of this light neutral. It's like a nice light cream tone. And I'm gonna tap this onto my eyelid. So not in the crease, but just on my eyelid. I want to make my eyelids stand out more and then I cannot wait to show you where we're going to place the pop of color. This technique literally requires like no thought. It is so easy and all the shades you can use as a pop of color in this place that I'm going to show you are interchangeable. So you could do this with this technique I'm going to show you with like a pink, a purple, a blue, yellow, any color that you want. And if you wear it and you pair it with these nice neutrals like I am right now, it's just the most foolproof way of incorporating color. It really is. It's like one of my favorite techniques of all time. So that looks really nice and soft. It's not too heavy. It's not too much. It's just brightening my eyes, opening them up a lot more. Like, look at that difference between this eye and this eye. It's huge. So now let's do it on this side. 
I'm really getting a lot of this product too. And I'm pushing it onto my eyelid just to really lock it onto my lid. You could also use my N12 brush for this too. And, but actually I'm gonna use it in a second for the bottom lash line. So I'm gonna save it. A brush like this one from Angie Han Flashy is really great for packing on a color, like one color all over the eyelid. But it's also good for like more detailed work too because it's not that big where you can't get into like smaller places like this area of your eyelid. So tapping it on, I'm building it up. I'm layering it to build up the intensity. And then how are we looking? Are we looking pretty even? This is my hooded eye. It's always hard to match this eye to this eye. So I usually end up going above where the actual crease is on this eye just to mimic the look of this eye. It's tough out here having one hooded eye, I'm telling you. I'd rather have two hooded eyes than just one because <laughs> at least they would look symmetrical. Okay, so, looking yeah, good. Teresa actually had a question about the hooded eye. Oh, sure. Um, I would love to see, it was, it was uh, super thanks. I, I would love to see what you would do with within my hooded eyes. My eyelids literally sit on top of my eyelashes, so I have to, I've had to stop wearing makeup. Mm. Is this is Tracy. Uh, Teresa. Teresa, Teresa, to answer your question, you know, for eyelids like the one you're like the ones you're describing, you still would want to utilize the technique of never closing your eyes when you're doing your eyeshadow because that's that's pointless. Because once you open, you're not going to see what you just worked so hard to achieve, right? Um, let me just get this eyeliner on too while I explain this technique. So what you'd want to do instead is always have your eyes open, so you can see all the parts of your eyelid, whether it's hooded or not, that are visible. So, and then you wanna just actually paint on that area of your eyes as if you don't have a fold, right? As if they're not hooded. Um, and I always think that gradual colors, like going darkest to the medium to then lightest for like really hooded eyes or for monolids work the best. Most flattering, gives some depth. Um, it's just a really great way to wear your eyeshadow. I really need to get a hooded eyelid model in to show some of these techniques. Like I really need to find someone to do this on because it's, I can't, I can only explain it so well on myself. Now let's get back to, back into the makeup because I am going to answer more questions at the end. I promise you, but I'm just using one of my favorite drugstore eyeliners for like a nice natural look. This is like so easy to work with. The shade is Nude Haze. It's the NYX Epic Smoke Liner. I just created like one of my classic wings, like a soft classic wing. This is most flattering on my eye shape. You don't have to pull it into a wing. You could just make it more of a rounded eyeliner look. Whatever suits your eyes best. But I would suggest even with a pop of color, still giving your eye, like your eye line, some nice soft definition. So it's exactly what I'm doing with this beautiful neutral brown liner and if you have deeper skin tone obviously you want to go for a much deeper rich dark brown than the one i'm using so just lining very very lightly and very softly now one thing i do want to recommend though for longevity this it's not the longest wearing pencil so i'm going to take now my n12 and I'm gonna dip into this powder version of this shadow shade right here. It's like a dark neutral brown. And we're gonna use this to set that eyeliner, but we're not gonna smudge it out. We're not gonna go crazy with this. We're gonna keep it nice and light, but use just enough to lock that in. Okay, so just like that. Just enough to keep it in place because when you're using pencils that are not necessarily long wearing, and even if you're using long wearing pencils, to be honest, if you're using them as an outside eyeliner, I always suggest setting them with a like-minded powder for longevity. So just like that. How pretty is that? So now we've reached the fun part. Now that our eyes are softly defined, we have a nice soft neutral, very you know easy to wear, easy to apply eye look. Now we can go with the, with the fun stuff. This is the fun stuff. This is the fun part. I'm going to open up that Wicked palette again. And 
we're gonna use, oops, sorry. We're gonna use this baby blue and I'm probably gonna mix a little bit of the metallic one on top. So let's grab for this kind of look and this kind of product, the BK Beauty 207 is a great brush for this, like a fantastic brush because it's gonna give me control and it has like the perfect shape that's gonna fit perfectly in this inner corner. And that's exactly where I'm gonna put this pop of color. So this is like the trick of all tricks. If you wanna start incorporating pops of color into your eye makeup looks, start in small sections. You don't have to put it all over your eyelids in order to wear it. That's, if it's not um, your style and not like the look that you're going for, but you still wanna wear some color, this area that I'm gonna show you is a game changer and anyone can do it. Anyone, any age, doesn't matter, any skin type can do this. So. I'm gonna take the 207, I'm gonna dip into this beautiful, it's like a periwinkle blue, right? Wouldn't you describe it as a periwinkle? I'm gonna tap off the excess because I wanna be make sure I want to make sure I don't have blue fallout on my eyes and I have not worked with this shadow before so I wanna be careful. And what you're gonna do is look straight into the mirror and blend it into the tear duct and then lightly blend it up just in this little inner corner of my eyelid. Isn't that pretty? It's soft. Mitch is gonna zoom in. Thank you so much. It's soft, it's subtle, and this is kind of where you can be your own artist and you can either build it up, make it more intense. If you wanna start slow to kind of get used to wearing colors, you could leave it at this. But me being me, I can't stop, so I'm going to add more. But let me finish this eye now first. So. Looking straight ahead, I'm gonna pop it right here. So once you kind of pat in and place it in the in the place you want it to be, which is right in that inner tear duct, you can feel it kind of go into like a socket. That's how you know it's in the right spot. So once it's there, then you could start to blend it. But placing it and kind of locking it down first is key so you don't end up with blue eyeshadow or pink or whatever pop of color you're using in places that you don't want it, okay? So always do like the look ahead test, make sure it's kind of even or at least even enough. I'm gonna add a little bit more right here, just like that. It's just so pretty. It's such a beautiful way to wear a pop of color and you'll get so many compliments And I'm not even like a blue fan. <laughs> I joke around about this all the time, but blue eyeshadow on brown eyes is so flattering. Add a little bit more. And now we could leave it matte, but now that you kind of have the idea of where I'm going with this and you have an idea of the placement, let's have a little more fun. And I'm gonna dip now into the shade Ball Gown, which has more, a little more turquoise in it. And let's layer this on top. Which is gonna line me back up. Thank you. Like I said, this is where you can just be your own artist and you don't have to follow this exactly. If you're if you're looking at this and you're like, I would want more, then totally do more. It's more of like an inspiration. I'm telling you, this spot is just absolutely so flattering for color. So, so pretty. I like that formula, the formula is nice. So we just use that matte, matte shade right here and the shimmer shade. You can actually zoom me back in. I'm gonna do um, mascara. So Mitch is gonna zoom us back in. Sorry to give you guys motion sickness. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not. Okay, maybe not that tight. <laughs> Feeling self-conscious. <laughs> I'm going to now do some mascara while you guys enjoy this beautiful pop of blue. And this is what's gonna really balance out this eye makeup look. Cause right now I look a little naked in some areas. Like, you know what I mean? It looks a little like it's missing something. Cause it is, it's missing mascara, which is gonna offer that balance. So I'm gonna prime my eyes first with a Dior 3D Maximizer. You don't have to use an expensive lash primer. However, this one really is quite legit. I've tried ones from Lancome before and I did not think they were impressive. This one works really, really well but there are some affordable ones to check out. I've always loved the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Primer. 
I think that one works extremely well at thickening your lashes and adding more volume to them. So we're gonna just get this on. Let that side dry down. Ooh. That lash got a little crazy. And finish up this side. After that, we're gonna set these under eyes and add a lip and probably some highlighter. What do we think of the blue? Yellow would be really pretty in this with this um, eye makeup look too. Yellow, pink. Uh, there's just endless color options you could choose from. Like whatever, literally whatever floats your boat. As far as like a pop of color, like whatever color you gravitate towards the most, try it in this inner corner. Like you will be shocked at how pretty it is. So for mascara, I'm gonna go for a drugstore favorite. It's a Maybelline Sky High. This mascara is, oh, so good. So I'm gonna start in the eye that's more dry now. I'm gonna try not to make any crazy mascara faces. And then we're almost to the point where we're gonna do the Q and A and I'm just gonna dedicate like 15 ish minutes to answering questions. I can't wait. There's a lot of questions I know. Okay. Such a good mascara. Do you guys have any other mascaras that you love from the drugstore you think I should try? Because I'm running low on this one and you know I'm going to have the itch to try something new. Oh, I love this look so much. I actually did this, um, this exact technique not that long ago on my client Heather. She's a beautiful blonde. I actually posted her on my page on my Instagram yesterday. But she was filming for her show that she's on and she wanted, she, like there was like a pink theme and we did like a hot pink in this inner corner. And we both agree it's like one of our favorite looks we've ever done. Okay, a little more on the side. See how that instantly, so now we have that balance, right? Like we didn't have to add a ton of eyeliner. It's like the perfect amount of eyeliner it's a soft amount to just kind of define my eyes but not take over and be too much makeup. So I love the way that looks. I'm so happy with this. Now we're going to set the under eyes finally. I'm gonna go back to my N14 and just lightly buff out the creases under my eye, which surprisingly, I'm telling you that Fenty Concealer is really fantastic. There's not much, yeah, there's barely any Creasing happening, so that's good. And I'm also going to use a powder that I decided to revisit recently because of my friend Lisa J. Lisa posted a full face of Fenty, like her favorites from Fenty, and she used this powder. And honestly, I'm gonna be really honest with you guys, I haven't used this powder probably since when I did that full face of Fenty Beauty. So I wanna revisit it and just not be wasteful. So it's in the shade. Oh my gosh, and thank you, Inger J. Denning. Oh, thank you so much for binge watching my videos. This is the shade O2 Butter. Thank you so much for the super thanks. Do you, okay, you two are, so, oh. And yes, I will link that lash serum. I promise you, I know I'm so bad about this lash serum. I don't know why. I will link it in this video. I will, Mitch, will you remind me? To what? Link the lash primer mm. serum in this video. Thank you. I don't know if you can link products and lives. Yeah, I put it in the, in the description. Oh, yeah. So using my N14, and I have some powder in the palm of my hand. This is how I like to do it. And I'm just lightly blending this under my eye. You know, this powder is nice. I don't know why I just never, I don't know why I never went back to it. Partly because I'm so obsessed with the Huda Beauty and the Givenchy that I just don't, I don't want to use anything else. But this is nice. It feels nice. It feels smooth. I love Fenty. Oh, by the way, though, speaking of Fenty, I do want to call out again. 
um, I posted a like a video, like a short form video on my on my YouTube and my Instagram and TikTok and all those places, sharing like my favorite Fenty products because they they still have a friends and family. 25% off site-wide of everything Fenty Beauty right now. The last day is tomorrow. So I just want to call it out again in case you, where's the concealer? <laughs> in case you want to try the concealer, I really recommend this concealer. Um, if you want longevity and just like a nice formula, I think that's a really great formula. Check out. Ooh, my little girl asked if you got the highlighter in this GR package. I did. I did. I'm debating on using it because it's a little intense. Let me show you the highlighter that I got in the PR package too. I can use that. What am I thinking? You know what? Let's use it with this. Why am I being like that? So let's actually make sure. Okay. Let's do a little bit of this highlighter. Now that I'm set with some powder, I still have some glow, which is nice. I have to say like that Fenty powder feels nice. I just don't love it as much as I love the Huda Beauty and the Givenchy. So I just want to keep it really real. So let's use this beautiful little witch's broom brush. This is so hilarious and genius. And let's pick up some of this highlighter. I'm, I have a feeling this is going to be very, very intense, right? Oh my gosh, Nancy, can you please do my makeup every day? <laughs> Nancy, I'd be so honored to do your makeup. I would be so honored to do any of your makeup. The truth of the matter is I just have no time. <laughs> I barely have time to like take any new clients. Um, but yeah, I wish that'd be so much fun. Okay. I like that brush. This brush is nice. Look how it, it just deposits a soft amount mm -hmm. of that highlighter. Oof. That's pretty. Oh, wow. Didn't see that pimple on, under my, I have another one. I just got rid of one there. <laughs> Love it. Okay. A little more highlighter. And then I promise you we're going to stop. We're going to answer questions. Oh, I love highlighter. I'm just so good. Okay. I need to add a little bit more really quick of my Kosas and my N15. I just want a little bit more warmth around here. This product is so layerable and so easy to work with. I love it on my nose. I'm obsessed with it on my nose. And now I'm going to grab my N12 one last time and then hear me out. I'm going to take a little bit of this shadow right here oops, because I need a little soft definition on my bottom lash line. It looks a little naked right now. So just balancing out the top crease to now the bottom lash line is key, especially if you're going to do pops of color. You want to have that balance going on. So nothing looks like it's missing, you know? So just shading that nice mm -hmm. neutral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even Mitch is like that. That's what was missing. Mm -hmm. But now that our under eyes are set, we can pop this on. So it's, it's good timing. I want to do one other thing because I feel like my lower lash line looks a little red. So I'm going to grab tried and true trusty uh, coconut eyeliner from Sephora. And we're going to do a little tight lining. Just like that. Just, just enough to cancel out the redness. But make sure if you're going to use a step like this, that it's a cream or a skin tone shade, not a white, especially with a pop of color, it will just end up looking really cartoony. And I want you to avoid that. So for lip, I'm thinking of doing something very natural. So I want to actually use this Tower 28 Lip Softy in the shade Dulce de Leche. It's really pretty. And I want to go for a soft lip liner as well. So for that, I'm going to use, should I use, yeah, I'm thinking, I was thinking either Tan or Cafe. They're both very similar. One's drugstore for $5, one's more expensive, but I do love this formula for makeup by Mario. Let's use Tan. We're going to run tan across the lip line. This has nothing to do with a pop of color. However, the shade that I'm using, it's just like the blush where in terms of it being soft and nice and neutral, and it's not going to conflict with the pop of color. So it's going to keep the pop of color, the focus, which is what you want. So nothing's clashing. So I'm just going to line quickly. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Missy Me says, wow, that tight line I can see from the UK. That is hilarious. <laughs> oh, I miss the UK. Okay. Got that on. Now, one thing I want to do, because I just like the feeling, I'm going to lock that in with a little bit of powder. Okay, just like that. Before I put my lip softy on, I'm going to set this makeup. You don't have to spend a ton of money on a good setting spray. This is like one of the, it's like it, in my opinion, probably the best drugstore affordable setting spray. It's the Milani Make It Last. Shaking it up. Really lock that in. Oh, once it hits my shoulders, it's so cold. And now I'm going to grab the lip softy. I just don't like the feeling, by the way, of like having a bunch of setting spray sitting on a lip gloss. So it's just something to think, think about if you're going to do setting spray. I don't want my lips to feel wet or like my gloss to feel wet after. Even though it is a wet product. Okay, so I just like to kind of smooth this over my lips and this look is done. This look, let me grab my towel. This look using and incorporating a pop of color. I'm telling you, this is like my foolproof way of doing it. I have another one too, which is using it on the bottom lash line all across, but that's a little bit more dramatic. And I would love to teach you guys that in an, another video if you want to see it. Leave me a comment, like let me know and I'll get that filmed. Or maybe we'll do it for the next Sunday live. You tell me. But I just love, this is like the best, one of the best ways, like I said, to incorporate a pop of color. If you're curious and you're scared, and you don't know where to start or how to do it. This is the technique to try, I promise you. So here's the final look one more time. I'm gonna move this mirror out of the way. I'm just gonna zoom in. What? Oh, thank you. Mitch likes my top. And <laughs> thank you. Okay, here we go. So here's, so, here's, so you get a nice perspective. The makeup is soft. Okay, let's go in really tight, okay? Here you go. Is it just me or do I look like I need a little bit more blush? Yeah, you need more blush. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> You need no. A liner. no, that's too much. Hold on, you guys. See, this is where it's always helpful to, when you think you're done with your makeup, okay? This is like, this is not just something that like, like even like me, like I've been doing makeup for 16 years. Like it's always good to take a step back, look in the mirror, get that perspective. Cause right now I got that perspective and I wasn't just looking at my face close up. Cause I don't have perspective when I'm this close up with my Amazon mirror, right? So once I zoom out, I can see what else I need to add to just finish the look. And to me, I need more blush. So I'm gonna layer this beautiful hourglass blush. I'll link everything I use, I promise you. So if I don't call out the names, I'll link it all. And I'm gonna add, yep, this is exactly what was missing. I think she needs a double wing liner. Mitch says I need a double wing liner. And she- Get out of here. It almost reminds me of the bird makeup that I did on her. Stop it. <laughs> Don't insult my pop of color. Yeah, this was it. This is exactly what it needed. See, it's always good. Beautiful. I, I love this blush so much. It's so expensive, but I love it. All right, you guys, I'm going to sit and answer questions. Can I pull this closer? Ooh, or... Nope. Here, right here. So if you had a question that you asked me and I missed it, now is the time. Okay, we're off to the races. I'm If I'm looking down, it's because I have to read your questions. Okay. I worry about long-term, okay, well, let's see. Celine says, so funny, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> <laughs> Celine, I love you. Um, which is ridiculous. Okay, Lisa. Lisa, first time catching a live, can you recommend a non-sticky, non-gunky lip gloss? Any tinted lip balms are gonna be your best friend, in my opinion. I actually think this is a really nice formula if you don't like gunky, all those things. And I know you're, I know the feeling, I know what you're talking about totally. I think that, um, God, what's the brand? Um, Tower 28. 
I think Tower 28 actually has some really nice non-sticky, non-gross. They just feel nice and like moisturized on your lips. I would definitely check them out for a non-gunky, sticky gloss. Or do a tinted lip oil. Those are also really nice. Okay. Um, hi, Nikki. Which foundation would you recommend for someone with massive heat flashes? Okay, so when you're getting heat flashes, are you getting your... I'm assuming you're sweating. I would do anything long wearing. So if you're worried about like your heat flashes, like interrupting like the longevity of your makeup, I would say like the Dior Forever Skin Foundation is fantastic. Um, even the YSL All Hours Foundation is really, really nice. Um, if you want something maybe more lightweight, you could always just incorporate like a nice primer just to keep your makeup from moving too much when you're having your heat flashes. And always, I'd say always, always set your makeup with at least a thin layer of powder to keep it in place. Oh, Lori, thank you. Okay. Nikki, how do you disinfect eyebrow pen? You can't, <laughs> you can't, there's no way. There's just no way. But here's the thing. Um, like, let's say, are you thinking about for yourself? Like you're worried about for yourself? There's, you could spray it with alcohol spray in theory. I wouldn't bother doing that because it could just ruin the pen itself. I mean, you can, you definitely can. And that would probably be the best way to do it. I'm not worried about sanitizing an eyebrow pen that I'm just lightly using in my brows. It's just not the, it's not the scariest thing in terms of like product buildup and um, dirt and debris and stuff. Um, hope that answers your question. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah asks, do you have tips for covering up hormonal acne and hyperpigmentation? Oh, and the hyperpigmentation it leaves behind it really lowers my confidence, but I love makeup so much. Yes, just use a color corrector. Color correctors are the best way to cover up, to like truly camouflage um, any scars, any hyperpigmentation. I use color correctors all the time on my clients that have hyperpigmentation. I have a lot of clients with that. So, Color corrector, and then you're gonna get a, you're gonna want to get a good concealer as well. Preferably not the same concealer that you wear under your eyes because those could slip more. I would say look into the soft matte formula from NARS, the soft matte concealer from NARS. That's a really great concealer for spot concealing, and put that on after your foundation is on. So color corrector first, then foundation, and then layer on top that full coverage soft matte concealer. For any of the areas you still see that discoloration popping through. Um, uh, not the double wing liner best video. Thank you. Mitch would agree. Uh, let's see. What did you use on your base? I use for my base the Makeup Forever. It's the new one, the HD Hydro Glow. Um, let's see. Angie. I have the Lancome foundation stick. I cannot get it to not pill on me. I've used less skin prep, no primer brush, fingers, and it still pills. Any tricks? I haven't used that one, to be honest, but I want to revert back to thinking it's a skin prep issue. It could be like maybe your sunscreen that's pilling, um, but you might also want to try just a different technique. Maybe try running on the back of your hand, warming up the product, dipping your brush into that, and then patting it onto your skin. If you are struggling and you're experiencing a lot of pilling, Patting your makeup on top is always your best bet rather than buffing because when you buff, if the product is going to pill, buffing it will make it pill, like no matter what. So I hope that helps, Angie. Um, wasn't there wasn't there a tone you like from Haru Haru, however you spell it? You spelled it right, Lori. Um, yes, it's the rice toner. It's like the black rice toner. It's fantastic. I love that. And it's really inexpensive. Okay. Let me scroll down a little bit. Hold on. I'm missing a lot. Wow. I was w really far up there. Ooh. Brow lamination or microblading thoughts. I think to each their own. I microbladed my brows a long time ago. And then I actually, I, I still would be open to going back if it didn't hurt so freaking much. <laughs> um, I think if you have no brows to start and it just it's going to be convenient for your lifestyle to wake up with somewhat of brows, then you should do it. But I would just say, make sure you're going to a really, really great person and you're getting a consultation and you feel really confident with that person before you commit. But at the end of the day, you could always laser it off, which is painful and expensive, but there are options. And lamination is good, but don't do it consistently because it actually can damage your brow hair. 
and make it fall off. Mitch just wrote, I love you in my hand. Thank you. That was sweet. You're nice sometimes. Okay, let's see. <laughs> so, you gotta go away. You're distracting. Um, Bean Boggle. Nikki, I have a round face. I need to know what's best for blush placements. Listen, there's nothing wrong with having a round face. First of all, I, and you are so beautiful. I can see your picture. You're so beautiful. I would say if you're in terms of like placement, if you want to lessen the appearance of your face looking more round, I would do the lifted sculpted technique where you go higher up on your cheek, you go up towards your temple and that's going to trick the eye to giving you more of a, just a different face shape. It's going to just trick the eye to make your face look a little less round. Okay, Elizabeth, thank you so much for the super things. Gosh, hi, Nikki and Mitch. Um, wait, here. Oh, oh, here with you every week. Oh, gosh, thank you. Elizabeth, I always see your picture pop up and I recognize you. So thank you for always joining. I, I love that. You're so, um, you're loyal. Tips, please, for concealing slash correcting hollowed under eyes. Not necessarily dark circles, but shadowing because of hollowness. I don't want to get filler don't don't do filler there it's uh, oh god it's a whole other subject it's a whole other subject for another time um don't do filler there good but you you treat it the same way dark circles so that hollowness creates a shadow therefore a dark pigmentation so you would actually treat it the exact same way it's really simple you just do a color corrector that matches that's suitable for your skin tone and then put your concealer on top i'm telling you all you have to do is you're essentially filling in this hollow. You're like, you're, you're filling it in. You're adding a fill color that brings it back further to like the surface. So it, it lessens like the, lessens the hollow. <laughs> I'm not describing this well. <laughs> it lessens the darkness and that hollow. It brings light forward. And then you'd want to brighten after that on top with a lighter concealer. But yeah, just color correct. I'm telling you, that's all you need to do. It's not complicated. I promise you. Um, missing me. Oh, love you too. Thank you for the super thanks. Alexandra Campbell. Hi, Nikki. This is my first live. Welcome. Sometimes when I do cream bronzer, it looks super patchy. I, I've used rare beauty nude sticks. I like light coverage on my face. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. It's, it sounds like it's your technique. So I always suggest Alexandra, if you're, especially if you're using like a light coverage, you know, and you, if it's running patchy on you and it's starting to look like it's not like a smooth, even pigmentation, because those, both of those are great bronzers. Try using a stippling motion and a patty motion. That's the best bet in order to avoid patchiness with your, your blending. Um, thank you for the dry skin video. Huda, Huda or Givenchy powder and NARS or Kos is considered for dry skin. I say Givenchy for dry skin or the by Terry is incredible. Huda, I use a little bit more for more my oily skin clients. And I think it's really great for oil absorption, but you could use it for dry skin too. But if I had to choose, I would say Givenchy for dry skin and either concealer. It, it doesn't, they're both going to be nice and hydrating for dry skin. So either one for the concealer. Alice, thank you so much for the super thanks. Oh, what a cute little figure. That's adorable. Hi, Nikki. This is my first live. I absolutely love your videos. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Um, let's see. Chris is not awake. I think Bella had a question a while oh. back. Oh gosh. Okay. So Nana. Okay. Hold on. Love you, Nikki. First live as well. What do you, what do you do when you get, sorry, what do you do when you go to set the under eyes, but the brush picks up the concealer? I've let it sit for a while. Okay. You've let it sit for a while. The brush is still picking up some of the concealer. Well, Okay. So the brush they're using to powder the concealer is picking up the product. What concealer are you using? It might be your concealer. Cause it sounds like your technique is in check. Like you're letting it dry down. You're applying powder on top. I mean, maybe it's your brush. If your brush is too like spiky or if it's too dry or prickly, it could pick up that wet concealer. Um, you may want to try a powder puff. Honestly, if you're having a hard time, you might want to try a powder puff and use a thin amount of powder in your powder puff and just pat it down. Um, I would try that and let me know if that helps you. Julie Trucks, oh my gosh. And by the way, thank you for the super thanks. I really appreciate you. 
And then Julie, thank you also for the super thanks. Best lip combo for light neutral skin tone and best shadow for forest blue. Ooh, to green eyes. For green eyes and blue eyes, I love coppers. Coppers look sickeningly gorgeous on green eyes. They really bring out green eyes and blue eyes so much. Like a rich copper, forget about it. Like so stunning. So any any copper is like, there's a couple of Charlotte Tilbury pal palettes that have beautiful coppers in them that are really gorgeous to check out. And then the best lip combo for light neutral skin. It depends on the lip color you're going for. If you want like a nude, um, an, an everyday kind of color, a red, let me, let me know specifically what you want or what you're looking for. Okay, there's a lot of questions. We are gonna hop off pretty soon. Oh my gosh, Nancy. Best serum to use to help wrinkles around the eyes. Asking for a friend, you're so cute. Nancy, you know what I love to do as far as skin prep for my clients? I love to do like a hydrating toner. I, I was just talking about Fenty Beauty, but I love the Fenty Milky Toning Essence. It's on sale till tomorrow, just an FYI, it's 25% off, but it is like so plumping, so hydrating for under your eyes. So if you have a lot of fine lines under your eyes, it is like one of my number one things I do for my clients that have like fine lines or even on myself. I have tons of fine lines under my eyes. I don't know if you've caught that yet, but <laughs> they're quite there. So you put it under your eyes, you let it soak in. It soaks in like almost instantly. Then I would suggest sealing it and locking it in with a hydrating serum and then maybe it teeny bit of whatever face cream you're, you're using or preferably like your moisturizing SPF. Um, that should be all you need. Nancy is an absolute legend. Yes, she is. <laughs> Lee just said that. Okay, Lee, I agree. Barney says, I agree. You guys are so cute. Milky toner for life. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, that's a good one, Linda. Linda says to Nancy, the Clarence Double Eye Serum is amazing. It, it is. It actually is a really great product. I want to say that was on sale during the Ulta Beauty sale too. Or maybe it's coming up. I know it. I think it might have been on sale at some point. All right. Um, Nikki, first lie for me. I have hooded eyes. After two hours, my eyeshadow starts peeling. Any tips? God, so many. But I, I feel like I need to just uh, direct you to a couple of videos I've done in the past. Like I have a whole... A hooded eye tutorial on my channel. It's maybe like a year and a half old. It's really helpful if you have hooded eyes. And also my budge proof eye makeup tutorial that is also on my YouTube. That's what you need to do. Like those kind of techniques you need to utilize if your eye makeup is disappearing throughout the day. So I would definitely check those out. Those are gonna be really, really helpful. Okay, let's see. Julie Adams. Hey Nikki, I'm your foundation twin. Would you do a peachy concealer to double duty, to double duty for color correcting. Don't have dark circles, just light hollows. Yeah, I would do peach for sure. Peach would be, peach would be perfect on you. If you're my my skin tone twin, Julie, and it looks like you are actually, <laughs> I definitely would. I would say like peach from Huda Beauty, the new one, the faux filter is so easy to work with and so good. But I also use pink too sometimes, so it just kind of depends. Like. If you're my skin tone, it's kind of interchangeable. Either one is gonna work. Um, it depends if you're dark, hollow. If your hollows are really dark, I would do a peach. If they're subtly dark and they're not super intense, then you could definitely do the cherry blossom from Huda Beauty too. That one's gonna work really well. Bella had a question if you could have her ask it again about powers. Oh, Bella, Mitch says, I missed a question from Bella. Bella, if you could ask the question one more time before we hop off and I would love to answer that question. Okay. Heather Casey says, dry, dry, dry lips. What helps the most? Night, um, this. Actually, two of these are amazing. These two right here are fantastic. Sorry. One is... No, it's okay. Because I'll list them. Okay. I'll list these in the description once this video goes up. It's the Fido Glow Lip Mask from Naturium. This one is amazing for dry lips. And an old school favorite is the Laneige Sleep Mask. They're both great what I love that one. mitch loves this stuff oh my god and then bella did you ask your question again i'm not seeing it she might love the chat oh, okay um i have a nickel allergy and get severe reaction to any lipstick i apply do you have any recommendations for something hypoallergenic hypoallergenic available 
you might want to check out like brands like you know Ilia. They might have some like nickel free things like that. They're good for sensitive skin. Um, even like something like Honest Beauty at Target that you could get. Like that's gonna be good for sensitive skin. But that is a good one. That's a really good question. I've never heard about nickel allergies before. I need to like I need to probably do some more research on that to be honest to really help you out. Okay, let's see. Agree with Notorium Laneige. Also love the Tatcha song. The Tatcha Kiss You stuff is in, lip balm is in my pro kit. My clients have been loving it. It's very juicy. Oh, Bella asked again. Okay, so Bella asked her question again. We're gonna answer that. Where did it go? I wonder if I could search it. Okay, hold on, Bella. Okay, and then while we're looking for Bella's comment, um, Talia, is the Fenty concealer good for dry under eyes? I can't remember. Yes, it definitely is. Really, really is. It's really, I, I think it's great for dry under eyes. Mm. Angie, I have I have to use Aquaphor, but only in the squeeze tube. I have that squeeze tube too. It's really good. Which loose powder for very light skin tone with neutral pinkish undertones, please? Very light skin tone. Okay, so hold on, Bella. I'm just trying to read your question. Where is it at? Right here on the top. Which Huda oh. loose powder? Oh, um, okay, so Bella, we found your question. Which Huda, Huda Beauty loose powder for very light skin tone with neutral pink? Cupcake would be great. Yeah. Cupcake is like, cupcake or um, pound cake would work too, but I'd say cupcake. Cupcake is really, it's like, I use that on everyone. I use it on so many people. Cupcake is like, I say cupcake. And if you're in doubt, I would do the mini size that they have at Sephora or on Huda Beauty's website. That way you can test it out, try it. And if you don't love it, you didn't commit to a full size. Or get it at Sephora. And if you don't like it also, you can definitely exchange it, even if it's used. Um, Nikki, do you have a peel box I can send to? Not yet. It's coming up. I promise. I promise you I'm going to get one very, very soon. Okay, I'm going to answer one more question. Tristan, can you do the color pop on the inner corner with a darker color or not because it's the inner corner. Well, you know what, Tristan, I, I don't recommend it. I think it could look a little off balance. If you do a, Tristan has a good question, like a really good question. Like Tristan's asking, could you do the pop of color with a darker color, like a smoky color? I'm, that's how I'm interpreting it. I think that would be a little, um, I don't think it's the most flattering unless you were going to go for a halo eye and you did the darker here and the darker in the outer corner, you let the spotlight light lighter um center then that's like a nice balanced way to do it and you could do that technique but i would say if you're doing the inner tear duct i'd say keep it somewhat lighter because it's more flattering okay one more question oh good bella i'm so happy that i answered your question i'm so so happy thank you for asking it again and Sandy, the blue eyeshadow was from the Wicked palette. Everything will be listed. I'm gonna work on linking everything as soon as I hop off this. It takes me a minute. It's It takes some time to do it. So give me like an hour to get it done. But I'm gonna wrap this up so you guys can all enjoy your Sunday. I had so much fun creating this look. Like I am obsessed with this look. I hope this helped you if you plan on wearing like a pop of color soon and you just didn't know where to start. Save this video. It'll be saved on my YouTube so you can go back to it anytime you're in doubt and just follow these simple techniques and you'll look like a pro doing your eyeshadow. You really will. Thank you guys so much for the super things. It's overwhelming how nice you are. It really is. But I, we appreciate you all so much. Tomas appreciates it too. He wants to say hi. Say hi. Mommy's got to give me treats. But I hope you all have a great Sunday. Thank you for the support on my two sponsored videos this weekend. It means the world to me. I really appreciate you all understanding. Sponsorships are kind of just something that has to happen every once in a while. And I only take them with brands and companies that I believe in and that I actually use. So you'll never see me take a sponsored post that is like out of whack and out of nowhere. So anyway, thank you for allowing me to do so and for the support. I love you all. I'll see you next Sunday. And I hope you have a really great rest of your weekend. Say bye. Say bye. 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 Love you guys.